Today I'm going to show you how to use adaptive components to create custom forms, profiles, and solutions to extreme architectural cases where you've got custom current walls, custom railings, and possibly even custom skins. Using adaptive components, I'm going to go ahead today and we're going to start by going to Revit button. We're going to go to New Conceptual Mass. And first off, we're going to start with a mass. So we're going to go ahead and hit open. We're going to create our new mass. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this work level by holding Shift and Control. I'm just going to pull it upwards and drop it right there. At this point, I'm then going to go ahead and hit Set. I'm going to set my work plane to this level. I'm going to grab a circle, start from the center. And it doesn't matter where I put it. 80 feet works just fine. We're going to go ahead and set to the second level, grab a circle from here. We should be able to find the, the center of the circle from below by doing so. We'll just go ahead and put 80 there. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom circle that I've created. We're going to take that temporary dimension and make it permanent. I'm going to take the top temp circle, select it, take the temporary dimension and go permanent. And then I'm going to take this dimension and I'm going to create a parameter, a label parameter which is a very great feature in Revit Architectural 2011. I'm going to drop down this box up here. I'm going to hit Add Parameter. This is going to be my bottom radius. So we'll go ahead and just type in Radius. And this is just going to be a type, and it's already a dimension. So we'll keep that there. Hit OK. And then we're going to grab the top dimension as well. And we're going to use the same label. What this allows me to do is then I can thus move this circle in and out, and they're constrained together. We'll go ahead and leave that there. I can also come up to Family Types, press that, and in here you'll notice there's a radius of 68 feet. If I want that at 40 feet, I can go ahead and hit OK, and it automatically will drop it to 40 feet for me. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to add a height parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and select a new work plane. I'm going to select this work plane right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and do a dimension, an aligned dimension. I'm going to align it from this work plane to this work plane. Just drag it out there. I'm going to then create the same thing as a label parameter. I'm then going to come up here, add parameter. We're going to go ahead and call this height. It's already on a type and dimension. That's good. We'll go ahead and hit OK. I can then change this height by coming up into my parameters, family types, and you'll notice there's a height. We'll put this at 40 feet as well and hit OK. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this circle, and I'm going to go ahead and grab this circle, and I'm going to hit create form. So now I've got my solid form, which I can then start dividing surfaces. So today what we're going to do is we're going to divide this top surface by selecting it. Go ahead and create a divide. We're just going to do a 2 by 2 here and here. This is your U grid, and this is your V grid. Go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to grab this segment. We're also going to divide the surface, and we're going to do a 4 by 8. And this part's pretty critical to do, so 8 and 4. 4 on the V, 8 on the horizontal. And they're going to do the same thing to this segment over here. We're going to make sure we do an 8 by 4 again. Otherwise, well, our next few steps won't work should we do that. Now, there's one more really important step we need to do. We're going to grab this vertice that we just grabbed, the meshing that we created. We're going to come up here. And we're going to select that little drop-down arrow. And in here, we want to activate nodes. So we'll hit OK. And same thing over here. Drop that down, activate nodes, and hit OK. This right here is exactly how you want it. We're going to leave this alone. Right now, the next step we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to create a new mass. So we'll come up to Revit. We'll go to New. We're going to do Conceptual Mass. We're going to do Adaptive Components this time. Just go ahead and hit Open. Now, Adaptive Components are basically uh, datum points or intelligent points on a system that are going to help you create profiles and systems and such and we'll kind of show you exactly how that works today. So first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and set our work plane, hit set, and we're going to use this as a work plane. We're then going to come back up to the draw box and we're going to select point element. I'm going to go ahead and draw nine points. Now it's important that we pick nine because we did a 4 by 8 mesh, we'll have 9 points that we need to select when we drop it back in. So we're going to go ahead and do 9 points. So we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I'll just drop the 9th one there. 
The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to select these points. I'm going to go ahead and filter it out, take off the planes, and hit OK. And then going to create, make these adaptive points. And right up here is that button when they're selected, adaptive points highlights. So we'll go ahead and select that, and those points are now highlighted and turned to adaptive. The next thing we want is we want the spline to go right through them. So I'm then going to go ahead and take, while these are still selected, and hit spline through points. Go ahead and select that, and now the spline is there. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab that spline that I've just created, and we're going to turn this into a reference line. I'll explain why here in just a moment. Now I'll go ahead and click over here in the properties box. It is now a reference line. The next thing we need to do is we need to redefine our work plane because we want to give this line some geometry and a profile. So we're going to go ahead and hit set. Come down to, it doesn't matter which adaptive point you pick, we'll go ahead and pick five. We want that vertical one that goes parallel or perpendicular with the reference line. So I'll select that. Now I'm just going to go, for this lesson, I'm just going to select an octagon. We're going to go ahead and just draw it out about a foot or so. It works just fine. And then I'm going to select that, hold control, and select the reference line. I'm going to come up here and create form. We're going to do a solid form. Now that form is now following along that line through all those adaptive components. The reason why I had you turn that into a reference line is when we went to a hidden line, we wouldn't be able to see that line anymore. It would have formed into the geometry. So now I can select that reference line, and I can turn it off. I don't want that as a reference line. I want it back to a generic model line. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and just turn my shading on. You can zoom around and see. We've got nine points. I'm just going to load this back into the project that we were just currently working on. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select nine points. I'm going to kind of get down in here. I'm going to start right here on first point, the second point, third, rotate around. I'm going to grab this node, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, and now my ninth point. And what's happening now is now it recognizes those nine points that we've created from the previous adaptive components. And I can keep doing this by selecting nine points on these nodes in direction so long as there's nine consecutive points, and it will actually draw that profile, and it wraps it around that radius. That is how you can create custom railings, custom curtain walls, so on and so forth, and extreme custom architectural situations.